Hello everybody and welcome to today's tutorial video where I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple countdown timer in Unity. Now I already showed you how to do this in my four hour long tutorial video where I made this like top down twin stick shooter version of the game Doom uh, which is playing right behind me as you'll see. And anyways I, I had kind of like a countdown timer at the beginning where it just says three, two, one, go. And a countdown timer like this is something that you could use in pretty much any game. So I wanted to break out this little section of the tutorial and show you this kind of simple setup that I made. And I will be providing the project files for the things used in this video. So make sure you hit the link in the description to download those. Also, if you found this video helpful and it taught you something, feel free to hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel for lots more uh, videos on game development. Also, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below. And if you think the game playing behind me is really cool and you wanna learn how it's made, again, you can check out that four hour tutorial that I made where it goes in depth into everything to create you know, the whole, the whole game front to back. So uh, starting with the menu, going into gameplay, user interface, and then ending with a game over screen. Um, it's a really cool tutorial. And if you're interested, definitely go check that out. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump on into the tutorial. So we're gonna start here in Unity and I'm just gonna show you how I have everything set up. As you see, I kind of have this HUD here. So we have some, uh, like a timer and some game information on the top here. And then in the middle of the screen, we actually have the countdown timer, which is gonna say three, two, one, go. So if you don't know how to create a Unity UI, you can just go up to this create here and go to UI. And this is just a text object for the countdown timer. So I'll show you how I have it set up here. It's under uh, the overlay canvas and I have it sitting in an empty game object called the HUD container. And then here we have the countdown text. So we're gonna start on the overlay canvas. I'm just gonna point out a couple things to have this set up. Um, so for UI scale mode, I have it set to scale with screen size. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, people are gonna be playing our game likely on a bunch of different resolutions. And so this just makes it set up so everything kind of scales properly um, for different resolutions. And then the reference resolution that I have is 1920 by 1080, just like a nice 16 by nine widescreen because that's probably gonna be the most common. And then for match width or height, I just have it set right into the middle here. Moving down to the HUD container, basically this is just a rect transform that I have set to uh, stretch in both the vertical and horizontal directions and I have everything set to zero here. Um, so it stretches to the full width and height of the overlay canvas. So on the countdown text object itself, I have the X and Y positions set to zero. For the placeholder text, I just have it say three. Of course, you can have this say whatever we want because it's going to override that once we get into our game. The font size, I have the max for a standard Unity text object, which is 300. For the alignment, I have this set to center and middle alignment. So it's gonna show up in the exact center of our screen. And then I set the horizontal and vertical overflow both to overflow. I'm just using a pure white color here. And then I did add an outline. And then with all the outlines, I like to take the alpha channel off, just bring that all the up to 255 uh, just so we get some nice hard lines um, around our text here. So now let's implement some of the logic of the countdown timer. So of course we're going to need to use a C sharp script. So for the tutorial video that I made, the four hour one, I, I put everything for this in the game controller script. Um, but as you can see, there's kind of a lot going on here. So for this tutorial video, I created a countdown controller script and that's what I've opened up now. And so this is gonna be a pretty simple script. However, we do have to include one more namespace. So we're gonna do using unity engine.ui. And so that's gonna allow us to uh, modify the UI components here. And then, so getting into the actual script here, we're gonna to need to declare a few public variables. So the first is going to be a public integer, and this is going to be the actual countdown time. So normally when we use time in Unity, we wanna use floats, and that's so we can get real precise precision um, for fractions of a second and things like that. However, because we're just doing a simple countdown timer that's three, two, one, we're going to use integers, and basically what we're going to be doing is uh, decrementing that countdown time by one each second. And I'll explain it a little bit more when we get to the code. Uh, but we're going to need just one more public variable. This is going to be a public text variable, and then we'll call this the countdown display. And so this is going to be a reference to this countdown text object that we have here in Unity. So the way we're gonna make our countdown timer actually tick down is by using something called a coroutine. 
And a coroutine, if you're not already aware, is very similar to just a standard function in C sharp. However, we can use what are called yield statements to essentially break out of the coroutine and then return back to the coroutine at a later time. So basically what we can do is we can have our coroutine execute some code just as a normal function would, and then we can say, come back to this in five seconds. After five seconds, then we can continue on with the rest of the code in the coroutine. So the way we actually declare a coroutine is by saying I enumerator, and then here's where we put the actual name of the coroutine. So we'll call this uh, countdown to start. And then just very similar to a function, we do open and close parentheses, and then open and close the curly brackets here. So within our coroutine, we're gonna start off with a while loop. So a while loop is gonna execute all the code within it while the, this statement is true. And the statement we're going to test is when countdown time is greater than zero. So if our countdown time were to start at say three, it's gonna execute everything within the while loop while it's at three. And then we're gonna decrement that, so it's gonna be at two, it's gonna still execute everything in the while loop. One is still gonna execute everything. Once it's at zero, it's gonna skip over that while loop because this condition right here is going to be no longer true. So while the countdown time is greater than zero, so we still have time to count down, we're going to set our countdown display dot text. So this is the actual text component of our countdown text equal to countdown time. So our actual number dot to string. And then, so this basically just converts the integer number into a string because we can only assign strings to this text component here. So now we're going to do a yield return statement. And then the yield return statement, this is kind of the point of the code where it says, hey, break away from this coroutine for now and then come back to it after a certain, certain parameter is met. Um, and in this case, we're going to do a new wait for seconds and we're gonna pass in the number of seconds we want to wait. Um, of course, we just want to wait one second, so we'll pass in one F to make sure that we're passing in uh, a float variable instead of a double. So after one second and we return to our code, all we're going to do is take the countdown time and we're gonna do minus minus. So it's going to decrement it by one. And that's all we need to do for our while loop. So again, what's gonna happen is if our countdown time is set to three, so three of course is greater than zero, so we're going to display three on the screen. We're going to come back to our code in one second. We're going to decrement it to two, and two is still greater than zero. And then so we're going to display two, return in one second, decrement down to one. One, of course, is still greater than zero. Display one to the screen, wait one more second, decrement down to zero. We're gonna loop up, we're gonna check. Zero is not greater than zero. So we're going to skip over this while loop here. So once our while loop is complete, basically that means we can actually begin the game. So one thing that I do want to do um, to let our player know that the game has begun, we're gonna set the countdown display dot text equal to go. And so this is just to make it extremely clear to the player that the game has begun and they need to go and start killing some demons right away. And so as game designers, you always need to keep things like this in mind uh, to make sure you're giving enough information to the player so they know what exactly is happening in your game. But it's a little bit more than just printing out go to the screen. We actually have to tell our game that is in the game playing state. So I have this uh, function on my game controller. So I'll do game controller dot instance dot begin game. And so this is going to trigger some things to allow the player to start inputting controls. It's also gonna start the timer in the level so the player can see how long they, they've been playing this particular level for and just some minor things like that. So as of right now, our countdown timer is complete. It's gonna say three, two, one, go and actually begin the game. However, if we were to leave it as is, it's just gonna say go on the screen forever and we don't necessarily want that. So we're actually going to do another yield return statement. So we'll do a yield return new. Again, we'll do a wait for seconds and then we'll just do another one second delay. And this time what we're going to do is do countdown display dot game object dot set active passing in false. And so this is just going to disable the countdown text so it's no longer showing up on the screen. So now we have everything in place for our countdown timer to work. However, we need to uh, start the coroutine. So we're going to actually do that in the regular start function here. Um, inside that, we're gonna call this method called start coroutine. 
And then here we just pass in the name of the coroutine, which is countdown uh, to start, of course, passing in the open and close parentheses, just put a semicolon at the end. So as soon as the game starts, we're gonna start this coroutine and it's going to do the countdown to start. So it's just gonna say three, two, one, go. And then we're actually going to begin the game. And then after one second, we're going to clear off the go text on the screen. So go ahead and save that script and come back over into Unity. And now we're going to need a game object to put the countdown controller on. I'm just putting it on my game controller object. Now we have to set up a couple things, of course. Uh, so we can set our countdown time to any number we want. We could do like a thousand if we wanted. Um, but for now, I'll just show it as five just to show you how it's kind of working here. And then the other thing that we need is the countdown display. So of course that's on our overlay canvas and that's this countdown text here. So we'll just drag that on. So now we're ready to test our game. So if we just go up and click play here, you'll see that we start counting down five, four, three, two, one, go. As soon as it says go, you'll notice that the timer uh, starts counting up from zero and the game has begun. We can actually start to move our player around. Of course, like I said, you can put the countdown time to whatever you want. So if we did like a thousand, we could hit play here and then our countdown time will literally start counting down from a thousand and uh, there's nothing I can do but wait a thousand seconds uh, to play my game. Um, but we don't want to do that to our players. We just want like a nice three, two, one. So we'll put the countdown time as three. Go ahead and hit play uh, one last time. There's a three, two, one, and go. And so that is how we can make a simple countdown timer in Unity. And that's going to wrap up this tutorial video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more video game development content. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to learn how to make this top-down twin-stick shooter game based off of the game Doom, feel free to check out that uh, tutorial that I made that, again, goes in-depth, showing you everything front to back of how to create that game. Really go ahead and check that out. I think you're going to enjoy it. But anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.